jeez. There you go, same spot. We're back with the last video in our series from Crooked Lake in September 2022. There's a link in the description for the previous videos if you need to catch up. It's now our fifth day in the Boundary Waters after entering through Mudrow via the Horse River. This trip is just Ben and Rob. Haven't heard any grouse. And we're fishing on Crooked Lake between Wednesday and Thursday Bay. Here's Rob for the intro. Good morning. <clears throat> today is Wednesday, which anybody that follows the channel knows what today is. And that would be, for you newcomers, Walleye Wednesday. Now we have had good luck since we've gotten here. And our walleye count starting this morning is up to 17, 17 walleye. Uh, we are not counting uh, bass or northern, we're only counting walleye. So, doing pretty good, um, not as good as June, but like Ben and I were talking yesterday, June was probably the trip of a lifetime. And uh, we're getting some of this action here in the morning. I don't know if you can see it, oh my goodness. It'd be pretty sweet if you can. But each morning, uh, we're waking up to better temperatures. Today, it was 52, did you say? 50? 50 degrees, which for me personally, that is perfect sleeping weather. Um, you see I'm layered up a little bit more today. Ben's got his jacket on. And <clears throat> it's the first thing in the morning. We are on our way out to check out the fishing situation. Um, to see what this temperature and this pressure change has done to the fishing. Uh, first few days we had no wind and it was hot. Now we've got a lot of wind and it's cold. So um, we'll check back with you when we get to the spot. Fish. This is bass. Oh, it's a walleye. It's a little one. Make a taco. this out, save our leech, and he's a little, he's a little 10 incher, 9 incher. Fishermen always exaggerate a little bit, they say. Yeah, it was about a foot. Yeah, it was about this big. <laughs> Here's my shoe. You count him? Yep. Kind of feel bad counting that little guy, but it is a walleye. We don't count the massive ones any different. Fish. Little. Feels like a walleye. And it is. He's a little 14 incher. Back in the water. There's a fish. That was a nice walleye. Oh, and he got away. The rain would continue to plague us and we had to put most of the cameras away, but I kept one on hand as we continued fishing as Rob hooked up on this large northern pike 
using Larry's copper magic. Nice. However, shortly after this fish, Rob cast off the second half of his rod, which catch? we were able to rescue, but Rob lost his beloved lure to the lake. Well, folks, that is the end of Larry's Copper Magic. Larry's Copper Magic. Without the will to go on, Rob and I headed back to camp to wait out the storm and then start breakfast. Rob's normally the one who makes the pancakes, but I've been watching. I think I've learned a thing or two. Okay. Would you look at the circumference of that? So far, so good. It looks like a pancake. Uno, dos, tres. Oh, nailed it. Look at that. Nailed it. Oh. Wow. What color is that? Perfectly golden, golden brown. brown. Oh, man. Whew. I had a lot riding on that. Well, because of Ben's culinary excellence, he is now the pancake king. Oh no, what did I do? <laughs> he, he has just opted to be the pancake man. The plan might have backfired. <laughs> I still have time to burn it. What do you give it? That's a 10 out of 10. <sighs> 10 points. Well, Rob and I got back from fishing this morning with, without too much luck. I think three walleye and a, and a bunch of small mouth, but the walleye were all small. Um, it's really windy today and it's cold. So, we're just finishing up with breakfast. We had pancakes, cheddar and jalapeno sausage, and those little biscuit bread things that we showed you earlier, but, and coffee. But I wanted to take a minute and show you our campsite. We're at a spot between Wednesday Bay and Thursday Bay, almost at the entrance to Thursday Bay. It's in a great little protected bay, although with this wind out of the northwest, it's about the only angle that could really mess with us, and it is. So, making a fire was a little difficult. 
but Rob persevered. So anyways, I'm on our landing now. I'm just gonna walk around and show you the, uh, the rest of this. It's a huge campsite. There's no one in this bay as far as we can tell. There is a campsite relatively close to us, but there's no one there and hasn't been since we got here. This is a site right here coming up from the landing. You have another tent pad right here, which is where we camped in June, but we could tell that the water had been starting to pool up in here. So we moved our tent just a little bit further down uh, where it looked to be drier. Cause remember we got here after three days of, of downpour. Uh, the bathroom is just about 20 feet back there. There's a couple of trails that lead out from here. Haven't really explored where they go, but there is a, a really cool cliff overlook way up here that we haven't been to, but we see it every time we go out fishing. Um, we got Rob over here in our kitchen playing with fire. I don't know, a little storage area right here, which could be another tent pad. You could easily fit another tent right here next to ours. Our tent does have a rain fly, but with the amount of rain we've been getting here, we like to throw up another tarp over the top of it. Um, there's a couple others. You could put another tent site back around here. This is our view into our bay right here. The little point there that's on the left of the screen is the other campsite, which is actually pretty close as far as the campsites go around here, but you got a pretty good drop off here. Rob and I throw some, uh, some stuff here at night when we're bored and fish for northern and smallmouth. This spot, it's, uh, it's west facing right now. So this spot right here gets the most amount of sunlight. This is where we do all of our solar charging and boot drying. In June, we were jumping off that. Being able to slide back up this rock. I don't think we're gonna, are you gonna go in today? Rob's not and I'm probably not either. So you guys hear us talking about the spot a lot. This is a segment we call Portage Mule on the Spot. Rob, what are three things you brought that you wish you didn't? Three things that I brought. Well, my chair, because clearly it was a pile of junk and broke the first day I sat in it. Yeah, that's one. Food. Um, I brought enough food to feed a small army. So maybe only one pound of Twizzlers next time? Yeah. Okay. And uh, maybe just two king size Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> Instead of? Four. Okay. Um, and the other thing I would say would probably be, gosh, I don't know. My other hat. I've been wearing this one quite a bit. It's a nice so, looking hat. It is a nice looking hat. It's the Portage Mule hat. It's very nice. So, yeah. What three things would you have not brought? I would have not brought my extra socks, my extra pants, and my extra shirt because I haven't changed. I can't tell if that smell right now is the fire or me. It's definitely you. Yeah, it's, it's me. Again, the rain came back, leaving Rob and I to continue our duel and battleship. Okay, it's Wednesday afternoon, and once again, we've just been fighting this on and off rain every, you know, every few seconds. But right now, we've got Simpsons guys, so hopefully that will hold out. Just caught a 19-inch walleye, first keeper of the day, and then uh, he wants a 21 though. 
Oh, I'm sorry, we're at 21. He'll take anything over 15. <laughs> but 21 walleye so far. And I need a leech. I hope that misses us. Is this a nettable moment? Yeah, probably. Can't see anything. So this is the fish I just caught. Rob and I are out now. Uh, we're trying to fish a little deeper and it seems to be working. We're catching good quality fish and we're not getting the, the bass bite that we were upriver. And we're only 50 yards from where we were this morning, but haven't got a bass yet. And that's what, three walleye right here? So we're deeper, so I'd say we're probably in at least 20 foot. Right around 20, whereas earlier we were fishing maybe 13, 14, 15, yeah, somewhere in there. But I'd like to try to show you where we're at and how we find these spots. But it's rather difficult now because the wind is just moving everything around. But this is, this is up, I guess we call it the river, but it's really crooked lake but if you can see through here the water is pushing towards us right now the winds actually making it look like it's flowing the other way but if you've ever been on crooked lake you know it's it's a huge lake so for all of it to fit in this you know 40 foot uh, channel right here you know it's moving but you can see the point on the right side that's the US side over on this left side over here, that's Canada. And uh, the water is just, just flowing right through there. And then all of this water makes a 90 degree turn where we're at right now. And that's where we're fishing. And it seems to get pretty deep here. I think last time we were here, if you just keep going, we don't want to get too close over to the Canada side, but right here as it makes this turn and starts heading directly south, it gets pretty deep. I want to say last time with the fish finder we were getting 50 feet, which is too deep for us, but it's good to know that it's here. So you're not wasting your time trying to fish that spot. But when we came up, everyone was telling us the number one thing that you know people were saying was, well, go to the same spot, just fish a little deeper. And that's what we're doing. Oh, there's another one. There we go. He's just a little guy. I was just gonna ask you for a leech. I might ask you for the net. Um. Oh yeah. Get back. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, this couldn't have been more than 30 seconds after I last spoke to you. Got it. There we go. Look at that guy. Just gonna get a quick... He's 23. There you go. Same spot. The rain came back and we covered the cameras, but like last time, Rob lands a great fish, this time an enormous walleye. Want me to get it. Focus on the fish. There you go. It's all you. The one 
one that almost got away. With about two hours until sundown, we head back to camp in order to give us time to collect and cut firewood, get the fire started, and prepare and cook our dinner. Tonight's meal is walleye, done the typical way with breadcrumbs and rum seasoning and our Velveeta shells and cheese. And some bread that we burnt. After dinner, we prep the site for more rain by putting what we can under the tarps, flipping the boat over on shore, and making sure the rain flies around camp are secured. Today is a much better example to show you what we're looking for when we're trying to find a spot to go fishing. If you can't tell, we're in a decent sized lake and it is narrowing down to this channel right here. You can start to see the moving water uh, moving away from us, but you can see the ripples on the water's surface indicating it's moving. And then when you come up to these little points like this one on the left, you can see the water moving around it and the water eddying out on the downriver, the down current side of it. This was really moving in June. You don't see much uh, on the surface of the water moving, but if you were to drop a jig down here, uh, you would feel it move pretty substantially. But it shallowed out here, it might be eight to 10 feet. Yeah, if you guys see that, that rock there, that's the demilitarized zone. No one's allowed in it. The left is US, right's Canada, and this you can start to see the water. The water's flowing around the rock in both directions, but just straight ahead, you can see all the water narrowing and the ripples start. You can see the water really moving. If you look over here by this rock, you can start to see the water flowing and how fast it's going. So we know there's moving water here, we know the walleye like to feed by the moving water. I'm sure someone could tell us why, but then you got all these swirls and everything that are going on down below. Now, you can fish these swirls and you can fish the current. Uh, it's just a little hard with our setup and using jigs. So what we do is we just push either to either side of the moving water and just fish the edge or what we found was pretty good yesterday was waiting till the water calms down, going past all the, all the swirls and boiling water and fishing just beyond it. There seemed to, it's a little deeper and it seemed to hold some decent sized walleye. the walleye. There go. First fish of the morning is a walleye right there. And he is 17 and a half. We'll wait for a bigger guy. There he goes. Well, good morning. It's Thursday and it's 7.54. The sun was supposed to come out an hour ago, but we haven't seen it yet. We just hooked up on the first walleye of the morning. The little 17 and a half incher straighten my hook out. 
the walleye count is at 25. Walleye. Much nicer fish not quite the size of the ones we were catching yesterday here but I think this guy's gonna be a keeper there we go all right there look at that beautiful There's a 19 inch walleye, second one of the morning. going for a snack. There you go. Fins out. He is 17 and a half. Fish on. Another little walleye. Okay, okay, okay. Small little guy. Better watch out. There's some big northerns in this lake. Ah. No bite. Fish on. jig that are yellow and blue and orange guy right there there you go quick measurement on him he is 21 All right, there we go right after that last guy. Yeah, 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 easy does it. Give me my minnow. Look at 
guys. Going back in. And that's a double click. Because I didn't count the last guy. Have your fish out on a string and be very careful or at least very vigilant because we have our walleye out there and i could start to see another fish coming up close to it and it was a big old pike about three times his size We're looking for an easy meal Oh, that hit like a truck. Another walleye. Great looking fish. Look at that guy. Eighteen and a half. Let's see if we can get number thirty-two. There's number 32. There's number 32. Nineteen inches. We return to camp and I make my much needed coffee to warm up. Good afternoon. It is uh, Thursday and it's probably close to like 1.15, 1.30. We got done kind of putting some things together back at camp. This morning, I needed to take a little time to myself because uh, I'm sure everybody's experienced one of those trips that just nothing goes right. From the moment your chair breaks to your shoes leak to the loppers break to the pancakes don't flip, the fire won't start. And you lose copper magic, which I will be sure to let all of you know when services are but it is the last day we're leaving early because we are picking up our new boat um, in Ely on Saturday and we are 10 hours up as we've kind of told you before going back it's gonna be kind of difficult down the going up the horse so here we are on Crooked Lake back at our spot and we are at uh, 33 walleye for the trip we're gonna see if we can't figure uh, finish out over 40. I have him hooked good. You got one. You got Wally.
No. Got his brother. It's Mr. Pike. Bass. Oh, it is? Any size? I mean, he's probably a couple pounds. But I mean, it's not what I want to catch. First walleye of the afternoon, measuring in it. Oh, 20. Pretty. Question is, what else do I have? I think so. Look at that. Yeah. Nothing can stop me. Except rocks. Rocks stop me every time. Nice. The walleye? Yeah. Oh. I think. It is. Oh, we almost had a double. He's a big one. Yeah. You on the net? Come on, buddy. So by now you've seen us catch quite a few fish and mostly by jigging, at least for a walleye. The key to jigging is a good hat. And as you can see, I'm modeling the river hat with a trout band. Rob is wearing what do we want to call that? This right here? Yeah. Uh, this is the Rob Fedora. It's the Rob Fedora hat. So obviously you see us familiar. catching a lot of walleye. There's some in the technique, you know, dropping it down, making sure you have the right weight to feel the bottom and then bringing the jig up just a little bit off the bottom and keeping it there and feeling for the little ticks that the walleye do. but. Really the key is the hat. 
see. What do you got there? That's yep. something that wanted to take me. Little, little guy. There we go. Moving at a rate of five miles an hour. Still guy, still wanted it. Okay, you guys. <clears throat> so just a quick tutorial on how to hook your minnow. So the first thing I like to do is get my jig ready. And then you can see here, I put my hand over their eyes so that they can't see. And I hold them like this because they don't know what's about to happen. And this way they don't move too much on you. But then what you do is just put it right through that, that there and then see they didn't have to look at any of that take place. And then they're still ready to go to work. That's how you hook a minnow. You thought you had a rock. I still think I have a rock. I don't think you do. There's a big doll. Are you up there? Oh, boy. I like that, that leaf drew that uh, jig that I gave you. Not now. <laughs> He's a 22. Would you get that fish out of the water? You're ruining my chances. There we go. Yeah, he's a nice 22. <laughs> when you're jigging, it's really important to just have your jig be right off the bottom here. I'm only moving it an inch, two, three inches off the bottom. And you can see we're kind of swinging around with the wind, so you do have to move it slightly every now and then just to make sure you're not on the bottom or caught on a rock, in, in our case. Just a bit. Or as Rob wiggle says, wiggle it. wiggle it just a little bit. But that's where the walleye are. That's where they're gonna be. You know, they may be suspended, but we've had pretty decent luck just on the bottom, just off suspended the bottom. Right off the floor. Or as Rob says, the floor. What am I doing wrong? There we go. Little guy. Coming right up, it's a bass. Go to Rob. Should be a decent size walleye. Stay down, stay down. He's a little bigger. He did not fight like it. All right, let's, let me show you what we got here. Oh, brother. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, my goodness.
Okay, that guy. I can't even, I can't even measure him. Yeah, he's over 24 inches. Almost 24 and a half inch walleye there. Fish on. Yeah, I think it is. They like that yellow jig. we go. Let's clean you off. There we go. All right, 39 walleye. Okay, I think we're at 40. If I can hold on to this guy. Yeah, that might be actually. It's definitely a bass. <laughs> He's a pretty big one. He's a big boy. Going for your bait. <laughs> well, we didn't quite get the 40 on that. It's coming up again. Well, hang on now. He's pulling him down here a little ways. Maybe you should let him <laughs> keep going. There we go. Five point zero eight. <laughs> oh, you see how fat that is? With a total of 39 walleye, we head back to camp early for dinner and to start packing our stuff for the trip out the next day. We need to be in Ely by 5 p.m., which means we're going to be starting out in the dark tomorrow. Right, it's it's about six o'clock. It's Friday. It's moving day. Rob and I have been paddling since five o'clock. We got up at four thirty, packed up the rest of our stuff. We already had one bag packed from last night, uh, so it went by pretty quick. But it is really cold, and we're paddling into the wind, of course. Uh, but uh, it's not not uh, too windy. It just it bites you. Can you see Rob back there? Say hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. Rob says hi, Rob. But we've been navigating mostly just by uh, moonlight and starlight because if you turn your headlamp on, uh, as Rob said, it's like driving through the fog with your high beams on. So it's best just to leave it off and find our way about. But we just made it into Wednesday Bay and everything's good. If I turn this light off, we might be able to see the, the sun start to come up. Oh, that's on. That's brighter. There. No. Stop. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, see that? That is so cool. Alright, this is what we're trying to navigate in. And yes, it looks exactly like that to us. See a little land. But this is the way we're going. Onward, Rob. Take us home. I don't know where I'm going. 
well, 7.55 and we are on our first portage. The fog has never really left. It was unreal. That's just uh, the other side on the north side of the falls. No, it does, I guess it doesn't look as foggy in the screen, but if we didn't have the map on the phone that keeps your position, we'd never be able to navigate that just by a map. I mean, once we got into those bays, you get turned around pretty easily. We'll have to look back at the GPS plotting it probably look like a zigzag but coming up on the falls right here despite the web too close. My legs are pretty stiff and kind of frozen. We're paddling up the Horse River now. Just got done with our first portage to get to the Horse River. And we just had an absolutely amazing week. 39 walleye. And of those, only, only a few probably weren't keepers. We had fish dinner every night except for the first two nights, which we brought dinner with us had great weather it got chilly towards the end but it makes for great great sleeping and great paddling today a little bit of rain but that's to be expected up here we were able to get the campsite we wanted which was amazing we're very happy about that once the firewood we collected dried out. We were able to make some pretty decent fires and have some s'mores and hot cocoa. Watching the sun go down. Most nights we were able to see, look up and see the stars. And that's just an amazing sight out here. There's, there's really nothing like it. We had to look around for the fish a little bit. They were not where they were in June, which again was to be expected, but everyone said just go to where you go to your normal spot, but just fish deeper. So we pushed on and got deeper and ended up hooking into some of those real, real decent walleye. I mean, I'll take those fish anywhere, much less in the boundary waters where sometimes the fish can be hard to come by, but a whole lot of bass. The largest one was that 5.08 pounder that I caught, but who's counting? Rob definitely caught the most bass. He wins that award. But he did lose his prized Northern Pike or the Larry's Copper Magic, so he's still in mourning from that. I want you guys to look around, see what we see in front of us, this beautiful nature scene, and this is 
This is why Rob and I come up here. It takes a lot of work. It really does. We don't we don't really put a whole lot of the planning into this into the video, but we do it for this reason, and it's the the solace and the solitude. We encourage all of you to come out here and spend some time in these woods and stop in at Canoe Country to pick up your permit and say hi to Bob and Kathy and that Portage Mill sent you. The rest of our trip out went well and we even had to wait for this moose who was on one of our portages. Thank you for watching and please like, subscribe, and comment on this video below. We hope to see you out there.